Hello everyone, this is Tucker, pharmacist at MD Custom, here to talk about long haul COVID once again. Um, first off, I wanted to thank everyone that has expressed an interest in the things that we're discussing and with this program and everyone that has extended my information to patients that I haven't met yet that uh, they think might be experiencing this long haul COVID or at least interested in learning up-to-date information, really looking at the body processes that are either disrupted or dysregulated, um, leading to the diffuse symptoms. Um, heartfelt thank you. I'm always looking for new ways to help people, so um, continue to recommend me to other people and I'm happy to include them in my information. Um, last time we spoke we talked about natokinase which is a supplement that uh, has been used to help with clotting um, for quite some time. We're really looking at using it to help resolve those um, clots that have formed but aren't being broken down appropriately in the body and then also highlighted some of the new information that was finding that it can also act as a serine protease and break down uh, spike proteins, which COVID uses to infect cells and um, are very inflammatory in nature of themselves, activating a lot of immune system markers and have been measured in the body up to 12 months post-infection in numerous organ systems, including the brain. Um, it was very interesting looking at that as a potential way to help resolve some of these symptoms if we're still producing spike proteins. If we have a reservoir of virus in the system that's um, producing these spike proteins that are causing inflammation, if we can break those down, that could be very helpful. Um, this week we're going to be talking about the nitric oxide system, um, which is involved in a ton of organ systems. It's a very small molecule produced by cells, used as a signaling mechanism. One of the biggest ways it works is it is involved in uh, appropriate expansion and contraction of blood vessels. Um, so we're really looking at circulation, improving blood flow once again in terms of ways to resolve symptoms. One of the, there's a few things that initially got me interested in, hey, maybe nitric oxide is one of the real big driving mechanisms behind these various symptoms we're experiencing. Um, we know intense fatigue, chronic pain, especially headaches, um, brain fog, shortness of breath, uh, chest pain are some of the most common side effects or, or I should say symptoms of long haul COVID. Um, and based on my knowledge of nitric oxide, I knew that nitric oxide signaling was involved in every one of those symptoms. So the first thing that got me interested was initially during the COVID pandemic, they were looking at lots of different therapeutic options to assist with um, patients in the hospital with severe respiratory distress. Um, one of them included an inhaled form of nitric oxide. Um, so they were looking at supplying nitric oxide from outside the body to help support the system within the body. Um, there's some compelling evidence that that was helpful in patients that were really having trouble oxygenating their blood in the hospital. Um, it wasn't preserved wholesale for a few different reasons, one being cost um, to install new equipment in each hospital um, to produce the nitric oxide. It's actually very expensive, costs about $100 an hour, and mean duration of therapy had to be at about three days continual, so 72 hours. Um, it also requires a lot of special training from respiratory techs, um, physicians, and you may or may not know this, but uh, even inhaled oxygen therapy can be somewhat dangerous if things aren't set up correctly, um, and nitric oxide even more so. So it wasn't pursued wholesale, but there was some interesting evidence saying, hey, supporting the nitric oxide system really helps with oxygenation and um, patients with severe active COVID. So that was um, the first thing that got me interested. The second thing, uh, shortness of breath, very common symptom post COVID um, and especially during COVID. Uh, I was involved with a study at one point during residency where they were looking at, we had this device um, in a community pharmacy where it could measure exhaled nitric oxide. And when that was elevated above baseline, um, we could connect that to, all oh, right, my patient has asthma. We've done this questionnaire looking at symptom symptomology. So how often are they having asthma attacks? How often do they need to use their rescue inhaler? Um, and then we'd measure their nitric oxide. And if they had poor asthma control, nitric oxide tended to be elevated. Um, what we do then is uh, 
basically make recommendation changes, maybe just really say, hey, you need to use your controller inhaler. There's a reason why your asthma symptoms are so severe. And bring them back in a few months later, uh, look at, okay, how's your, how's your symptoms doing? And then um, measure their nitric oxide exhaled level. Um, and if that is decreased, then we know, okay, our symptoms are approved. Our nitric oxide exhalation is down, which we, meet, knows, we know means that um, using your controller inhaler is actually helping with asthma control and supporting your nitric oxide system. So that was another check mark in the box for, hey, maybe nitric oxide signaling is really at the core, um, one of the major ways in which long haul COVID is propagated and continues months after that initial COVID infection. There's a lot of different ways that it's thought that um, COVID can really cause the nitric oxide system to be disrupted. One of the biggest ones is those spike proteins have um, a lot of reactive thiol groups hanging off them, about 24 to 40 per spike protein. So if someone has a really significant viral load, they could be scavenging of nitric oxide as it's being produced at the source by these virus particles that are moving through the bloodstream. And that short-term but significant disruption of nitric oxide si signaling could lead to long-term dysfunction or dysregulation um, in certain patients, which is why some individuals have those long-haul COVID symptoms that take weeks, months, sometimes years to resolve. Um, earlier this month, uh, one of my co-pharmacists, Dane, uh, did a video talking about nitric oxide systems, specifically Citronox, which I'll get more into that later in this video, um, used as an anti-aging um, uh, supplement, which uh, I would echo that's certainly true. Um, we can actually measure nitric oxide levels within the body as people age. Um, production decreases, the ex expression of nitric oxide synthase is down as we age, which really connects it to a lot of different disease states that we associate with aging, um, including uh, hypertension or high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, stiffening of those blood uh, vessels, uh, metabolic disorder, basically gaining weight without changing exercise or um, uh, diet, um, and then renal disease or kidney disease. Um, a few weeks ago, I did some research for a patient that was experiencing kidney disease and looking at, okay, what are the mechanisms by which kidneys are being damaged? What can we do to support it? And um, the nitric oxide system is one of the more compelling things that came up. So I, I pretty much recommend supporting the nitric oxide system and specifically Citronox to patients regardless of age. Um, I have a lot of uh, young athletes actually using uh, Citronox um, because that nitric oxide system is involved in ensuring optimal mitochondrial function. Uh, the mitochondria are the powerhouses of each cell. So if we're converting food into energy and using oxygen more efficiently, it actually reduces their oxygen demands and helps them improve their athletic performance. So at this point, we'll, we'll get into basically there's, there's two primary ways in which we can support the nitric oxide system. They're both amino acids. There's one called L-citrulline, which is contained in nitric oxide, and L-arginine. Um, L-citrulline is being found to be a better agent in the average person for supporting nitric oxide production because it has higher bioavailability. There's less um, uh, consumption by stomach acids, um, digestion through the liver. Um, before it can get into the bloodstream. So we get better absorption, longer um, acting benefits. Um, but there are some patients where L-arginine is more indicated. And if you sign up for the newsletter, I'll give you all that information and we'll be able to pick out what the best option is for you specifically. Um, one of the reasons I really like Citronox as well specifically is that um, if we support the nitric oxide system but are not supplying the body with additional antioxidants, if the body experiences some oxidative stress without getting too far into the weeds, there is uh, a few uh, metabolites that can be formed that are not good for the body. But Citronox as a product has thought of that already. So it has two other components in there. One is um, 
uh, quercetin, which is a flavonoid. I recommend it an awful lot. It has some benefits with immune health, um, with uh, inflammation as it builds up in the body. And then the other thing they include in there is this polyphenol grapeseed extract, which is going to basically provide a lot of antioxidant capacity just in this product. So if you're not, if this is the only thing you're taking, you're you're covered. You don't have to worry about those metabolites. Um, and those polyphenols are also really involved in helping prevent atherosclerotic damage. Um, so by having antioxidant properties, we're preventing LDL or bad cholesterol from being oxidized, which is really one of the markers that is most closely associated with cardiovascular outcomes like stroke and heart attack. Another piece of evidence that really made me think that the nitric oxide pathway might be involved in some of the propagation of COVID symptoms is initially, early in the pandemic, um, in July of 2021, um, they were looking at um, this big study in the UK, looking at patients that contracted COVID and didn't contract COVID, and then looking at symptoms that may have popped up that they wouldn't have necessarily connected to post-COVID uh, infection complications. Um, one of the biggest ones was lack of smell. We all know that's a you know very well established thing that a lot of people have experienced or firsthand or certainly know people that didn't smell anything or couldn't taste things for quite some time. But the next two were very interesting. One was um, there was a four times increase in diffuse hair loss, so just kind of rapid hair loss throughout the scalp. Um, and the other thing was a 2.6 times increase of um, erectile its function that wasn't there ahead of time when they were measuring symptoms 12 weeks post-COVID. Um, both those um, disorders are things that I recommend Citronox oftentimes for. So there's another um, nail in the coffin for saying, hey, nitric oxide is certainly involved in long COVID. If you found this interesting or compelling, uh, please, please sign up for our newsletter. Um, I or give us a call and say, hey, I would like to be on Tucker's long haul COVID program list. Um, I've got more information in the emails I'm sending out. And if this is something that you want to have a more in-depth con consultation on, we always offer those over the phone or in person. Um, also worth noting, uh, you don't have to be in Wisconsin to um, have me help you. My phone reaches pretty much everywhere in the United States, and I can ship anywhere in the United States as well. So um, if you have patients out of state that you think might be interested and I might be able to help, don't hesitate to have them reach out to me. Our uh, contact information will be listed below and um, let us know if you need a consultation or if uh, you just want to get up, signed up for the list, give us a ring and all we'll ask for is an email and we'll get you all caught up. Um, if you haven't viewed my video on natokinase from last month, we're going to have a link uh, on my left here. Um, and upcoming i'm looking at sometime in august talking about glycocalyx so really digging into the arterial health um, and disease of small blood vessels a uh, lot of interesting research coming out on the glycocalyx so um, keep keep an eye out for sometime in august i'll finish my research and post another video thank you so much everyone have a